Welcome to Current Affairs at Copenhagen Suborbitals. What's happening right now in the Amateur Rocket Project, with the goal of launching a human being into space and bringing him safely back to Earth? Hosted by Jakob Larsen. Welcome back to the Copenhagen uh, Suborbitals Rocket Shop. Uh, we have Fleming uh, Rasmussen with us again, and this time we're going to talk about his one of his quite different roles from the uh, jet vane manufacturing we were discussing earlier. So, uh, welcome back, Fleming. Thank you, Jakob. You're not just only into jet vanes. You have something with seawater as well. Yeah, actually, I have a lot to do with seawater. Everything I do besides my job has got to do with seawater. I kite surf, I scuba dive, I wakeboard, I water ski, uh, and I skip a blue rip, which is, a, uh, in my opinion, the most important vessel in the whole fleet of Copenhagen's waters. But of course, and that's of course where your nickname comes from, Fleming Rip. So what is this, uh, this ship, this wonderful, magnificent uh, flagship? Yeah, Rip is, uh, is an abbreviation for a rigid inflatable boat, so it's a sort of a hybrid between a uh, glass fiber boat and a uh, rubber boat. And what special qualities does that give to the boat? It, uh, it gives a boat which handles very, very rough weather. Uh, mm-hmm. It gives a boat with, because it has got quite a big engine, so it's, it's a fast boat. It does plus 40 knots. Um, and it, uh, it gives a very, uh, very rocketized boat. I can go on the side of any boat without risking uh, scratches or dents on either my boat or the other boat because it's, the boat is one big fender. Mm. So it's, it's an ideal boat for, uh, for fast transport, for moving people from one vessel to another vessel, for reaching uh, splashdown points at very high speed. The boat is equipped with uh, navigation uh, equipment, uh, radio, of course, so uh, AIS transmitter and so on. So uh, in, in close cooperation with the flight dynamics officer, we can be directed to wherever, whenever he wants. So yeah, okay. So the, the more boring tasks you end up is being sort of a taxi driver? Uh yeah, but, they, but, but it, it, it's never boring to be on the water. I gotta the, give it to you. I've tried it myself, jumping back and forth between the rib boats and our different vessel. It, it works just fine. Um, so, and and we can't avoid. I mean, on a sea uh, on a sea launch mission, we can't avoid having to shuttle people around. I mean, stuff just happens, and and we now, need to be mobile out there. Yeah, but it's nice. I I I am the one who gets to talk to everybody when we are uh, we are at sea. So uh, so I also enjoy the. The cab driving. I seem to recall a few very, very relaxed, uh, uh, tranquil moments when we were having the hold on the Nexo One last year. Uh, mm-hmm. You and uh, our rescue diver just sort of strolling around and almost seemed like you were on a, some sort of uh, mid Atlantic or mid, 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 uh, Mediterranean sea uh, vacation, really. Yeah. It just looked so cozy. <laughs> I wanted to be out there. I was being fried on the deck of Sputnik. Yeah, okay, with the next one, we were really blessed with Mediterranean weather. It was like 25 degrees and the sea was dead calm. So we, we, had, we had a really good time. Mm. And we have, um, we have a lot of fun on that boat. It, it, it's a fun place to be during launch. Oh, and I, well, the, the response time is actually really important because, well, of course, next one didn't really exactly perform as intended. So suddenly the whole situation changed really fast. Yeah, and if you look if you look at the video from Nexo One, you will see from uh, from the time the rocket resurfaces till we are there is approximately twenty seconds. So, uh, and that's not because it dropped down right next to you. It's because we reacted fast and have a very good dive on the boat, and he was in the water thirty seconds after the, mm. the rocket had. Well, we, we definitely managed to secure most of the Nexo one uh, and the nose cone itself, and um, we only actually lost one thing out there. We lost the uh, avionics sections and the parachute section, and that was actually very close to... Uh, we, we did see it sink under us when we got there, but we uh, prioritized to, to secure the, the actual vessel first, and then... Uh, at the time that was secured, we, we could no longer see the parachute. Because it was definitely the right choice. I mean, if you hadn't gotten there at the time you did, probably would would have lost more items. So could be. I don't know. I I think uh, retrospectively that the rocket would have floated for an hour or so. Mm-hmm. So, but 
Well, it's we don't easy know. to be wise afterwards. Yeah, we couldn't know, really. No. So, well, I'm looking forward to uh, having Blue Rib around next time we're out there, um, doing a good job with the rest of the fleet. Thank you. So, thank you. I'm very looking much. forward too. All right. Thank you. For further information about Copenhagen Suborbitals and our mission, please go to our YouTube channel as well as our homepage www.corpsart.com. As we're funded entirely by sponsors and donors, we need the support of our many fans to reach our goal of manned amateur spaceflight. You can support us by contributing through the support page.